Hello, I'm Lori from the Bees Knees Pottery, and today I'm going to show you how to make these little clay dishes that have stampings. We're going to use a wood form and some paper patterns. Join me. We're just starting with a slab of clay. We're using measuring sticks. We're putting two sticks thick, and we're putting it next to our clay. That's going to help us get our clay rolled out nice and even. You see how the roller is touching both sides of the sticks. I'm just going to roll it until it gets big enough for our pattern. There will be a pattern in your kit. It's just a circle. It's a little bit larger than the wood form that we're going to be using today. So it gives us a lot of working room. We're just going to roll the clay out so it fits that pattern. Notice how I'm not going right to the edge of the clay. That's how you keep the uniformity. If you go off the edge of your clay, the edge will be too thin. So we just go up to the edge and don't go off it. And we'll just make sure our pattern fits. That looks good for now. The next thing we're going to do is take our paper cutout. This has a design on it, and it's going to make the patterns that you see, um, such as this. I'm just going to lay that paper right on the top of our clay and roll it. When we roll it, it's going to make an impression on the clay. Make sure it's stuck in there pretty good. And then we're going to pull that off. And there's our pattern, our design. So even though it's just paper, it still makes a pretty nice design on your clip. Then we're going to take the pattern that we started with, put it on our clay, decide what this has leaves on it, so decide what leaves you would like. I'm just going to place it on the clay, and then we're cutting off our extra clay. I'm going to make extra room just because um, this is not our final trim. I'm just making a rough cut. But removing the excess clay just to make it easier to handle. I'm going to take my clay form. This is just a little um, shape of a dish. It's wood and we want the pattern to be next to the wood. I'm going to take it and just flip it over. And I'm going to take my fingers and gently bring the clay up to the form. See how I have all this extra clay around the edge to work with? Just gently doing that because I don't want to disturb my pattern on the other side. And once I've done that, I'm going to take a tongue depressor and I'm going to gently smooth it out. This is compressing the clay. I'm just going to kind of do it all the way around. I'm not doing it hard, I'm just compressing the clay against that wood form. I'm just going to feel it with my hands to make sure it's up against that form. I'm going to take a sponge and some water and just compress it a little bit more. Now the next thing I'm going to do is trim the edge. This time I'm going to go underneath the clay to the form and put it on top of the cup that's inside your kit. Any cup will do, but this one just fits perfect. And I put that on and I'm just pushing the edges down. I'm going to take 
the stick and finding the edge, finding the edge there, and I'm just going to cut the excess off, just trimming it. You can feel the wood form underneath. And I'm just taking my stick and going right underneath it. And we're going to clean it up so it doesn't have to be perfect, but you'll when you're doing it, you'll feel how easy it is to tell where the form is. And you can just keep spinning it around so it feels comfortable while you're cutting it. There you go. Some extra clay. I'm just going to take my sponge and take a look and make sure I'm still nice and compressed around the form. Feeling the edges. Cleaning these up just a little bit. The next thing I have to do is put a foot. On the bottom of these we have a little foot. It just kind of makes it a little more substantial for you. So that's the next part we're doing. Now I have a handy little tool that I've created. And it is the toothpick with a rubber band in between. It's kind of small to see, but there, there'll be one in your kit for you. And it just automatically makes the perfect angle for me. So that's what I'm going to use to make the foot. I'm going to take some extra clay and just cut it out. There'll be a larger and a smaller size to it when you do that. The larger side will go against your plate. If there's not, that's fine. And we're going to put this right on the edge of the plate. And you're going to take your needle tool and just rough it up, score it right on that edge. Another way you can rough it up is to use their screening in your kit. You can use the screening and just rough it up with that too. A couple of different ways, whatever you're comfortable with. You're going to score the foot that you cut off. Add some water. The water is going to make the slip for you. The slip will be the glue that holds these two pieces together. Remember, if you don't do this, you're going to end up with um, the piece, when it dries, this will fall off. I just need another small piece here. Now, the way you cut this to join it is at an angle. I'm just going to overlap both sides here. And then you can cut it at an angle like this. You can cut it at an angle going down into your pieces like this. But the angle helps them fit together. See how I cut through both pieces, and then I'm going to stick them together. Take off the excess on both sides. And put them together. I'm going to take it off the cup just to give me a little more stability. I'm going to take some water and I'm just going to clean this up and center it so it all becomes one piece. I'm 
you can take your um, tool, your the little pink tool that's in your kit that has the needle on one end and uh, an angled knife on the other end, and you can use that to clean up and straighten your seam there. Do it inside and outside. Take a look overhead just to make sure it's where you want it to be. And we're going to flip it over and just press gently. It makes it nice and even on the bottom. These are small dishes, so just press it lightly, gently, so it's not rocking anymore. It should be nice and flat for you on the bottom. And just keep cleaning that until you like what you see. I'm going to take a sponge now. It's just another level of sanding and cleaning. And clean up the edges again. Get my fingernail marks out of there. It's not attractive. there we go. Now the next step, it has to be a little drier. When you're making small dishes, you can, um, some people probably frown on this, but I do use a hair dryer, but I just take it and gently move the air around it to help it dry up. So that's what I'm going to do right now, just to give us um, a little time lapse quickly to dry it. And um, we'll go from there. I'm also going to put, at this point, my signature on the bottom. You can use a needle tool. You can use a stamp. Some people have a stamp to use. You don't want to go too deep. You don't want to go through the plate. And I could sit here and play with this all day, but we're just going to quickly dry it up. It's going to take about um, half hour minimum, uh, usually an hour to four hours before you can pop the mold out if you don't use a hair dryer. So this is small. Uh, let me be clear. I'm only using the hair dryer because it is a small piece. If you had a larger piece using the form, you would never do this. It's going to dry uneven. It's going to give you problems. But with the small piece, it's not a problem. Um, you can see how the form is falling out. Okay, so real easy. If it doesn't do that, just take your needle and on the side of it, you can kind of grab it and pull it out. Okay, but you can see we didn't need that. Um, it is, it's not leather hard yet, it's moving around. I'm going to go ahead and use a hairdryer on the inside of this piece, and then that way it'll become leather hard and it'll be ready to. Okay, that didn't take very long with the hair dryer, but it is now not as pliable. So that is leather hard and ready to go. The first step in your painting is to clean the edges of your piece off. So we are going to take a screen that's in your kit and you just clean your edges like sandpaper. Making them even. Just be real gentle. It's like super coarse sandpaper. A couple of other tools you can use. You can use your sponge. It'll be a little softer sandpaper around the edge. The next level, it's a little more fine. 
see it all coming together. The other thing you can use is you can take a credit card, or in my case, I used a health card, my um, health insurance card. You can cut a little notch in it and then just use it around the edge, and that'll help make your edge uniform. Be careful not to get it along your design. Watch how you're holding that and keep it consistent all the way around. I'm just going to go one more time with my sponge. And we're ready for painting. I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to clean my piece out because I have a lot of pieces, little tiny pieces of clay that I don't want on my piece when I paint it. But see, my piece is dry, the clay is dry, so it is actually just brushing right out. I'm not hurting the design at all. Right here, there's, I don't know if you can see, there's a little piece of paper left from my um, design pattern. So I'm just gonna pop that out. I don't want that underneath my paint. Just check all your areas. Turn it over, make sure there isn't little crumbs of clay there. See if you have to clean it up. I usually do. Uh, you know, my fingernails are super short right now, but I still get marks here and there. Just be diligent in your cleanup process. And then clean your workspace. Get rid of all the crumbs. I am going to start with the bottom of my um, piece for painting. I'm going to flip it over and I want to show you the paint. The paint is pretty light and the paint I have in this container here is actually the color of this when it's fired. So it changes drastically. Okay, we're going to just take our leather hard clay and a clean brush. Just dry it off. And our paint. Now I'm not going to come in and paint the foot. The foot has to remain unpainted. We're doing this on um, wet clay, leather hard clay. So we need an area for the clay to um, off gas. So that means all the gases that are going to um, escape during firing, we need to give them an area to do that. So that's going to be this ring. We're going to paint three coats and you want it to be dry. You can tell it's dry when it becomes chalky looking, just like sidewalk chalk. And again, I'm coming around. I'm not touching that um, rim that we put on that foot that we put on. I'm not touching that. Now, how fast it dries really depends on well, how your house is uh, uh, with humidity, where you live, you know, what, what the weather is outside. And you, sometimes you have to be patient and other times it just soaks right in. So I, again, I'm going to use a hair dryer just for the sake of this video to show you what it looks like when it's chalky and ready for the next coat. Okay, so you can see it looks like chalk. 
it's lightened up quite a bit and we're just going to go ahead and put another coat on. This one you see goes on a little thicker because it's not absorbing into the clay at all. And I'm being very generous with my glaze. That's important too. Okay, that's three coats. Um, if you're just leaving it sit out to dry, it's probably going to take a half hour in between each coat because you are working on wet clay. Um, and again, I'm only doing this because it's a small dish. My foot has not been painted, so I can just turn it over right away and get ready for the inside. I'm going to do the same thing on the inside here. I am going to double check it before I start painting to make sure all my little crumples are out of there and any cleanup that I want to do is done. You notice I'm going right over the design and I'm being gentle because I don't want to disturb that. I don't want to put any scratches in it. Being very ge generous with the paint, but I don't want to leave any big pools of it. And again, I'm going to let the hair dryer um, circulate some air over the top to help it dry. If the paint pools, it might crawl. And crawling is when the paint actually comes away from your piece and it creates a bare spot. So you can see the bisque and there will be no paint there. So make sure it's applied evenly. And the last coat. Okay, now that you are done painting it, you'll have the plastic that you are using for your workspace. Once it's dry, just go ahead and pick up the corners to lift it and put it in your bag. Okay, you're just gonna lift it up, put it in your bag, and um, gently take it back to our, the studio for firing. It does take once you get to the studio, it takes a week for drying and another week to go through the um, kiln. Once it comes back from the kiln, you're going to have it nice and shiny like this. And this was the orange color we used, and this is the leaf pattern. You can see it does shrink. You can see the difference in size. It does shrink a little bit through that process. And um, 
it'll look beautiful for you. They make beautiful gifts. They're, it's so, and they're fun to make. And you saw how fast, if you need to make a lot of them for maybe a shower or a wedding, um, you can actually you know, print names in them. You can use a stamping kit and put names in them. They're just fun. I like, once I get started, I can't stop. So again, pick it up, all corners, gently put it in your bag, and you're good to go to bring it back to the studio. I hope you had fun. Thanks for visiting with us. Remember, like, comment, and subscribe. See you later.